to Raw. I'm your host, Lena, and you just heard Ridgewood Blues by the Brojugs. But that's not really their name. That's an abbreviated ber version of, I have to cut to you, it's the Brotherhood. The Brotherhood, the Brotherhood of the Jug Band Blues. The Brotherhood of the Jug Band Blues. That's a name. I like yeah. Brojugs for short. We'll stick like to that. Brojug. Brojug the, other. the abbreviated version, yeah. That's... Okay, can we go around with, we're going to start with the lady. And can you tell everybody your name? Um, my name is Samoa Wilson. Samoa? Yes. Hi, Samoa. Hi. And you are? Rashad Brown. Rashad, hi. Well, I'm Arturo Style. Arturo? Yes. Oh, I like that. Ernesto Gomez. Ernesto. Well, we have a group here, right? This is like a brotherhood. Yes, sure. A band. In one of the other songs, I know you were, the way you sang it, I have to ask, like, that was definitely international. Um, Ridgewood <laughs> Blues. Uh, that made me feel, when I heard that song being played, I, I was like torn between the Beverly Hillbillies, thinking about Judd Nelson, Judd, okay, <laughs> okay the, the dad, yeah. or being in the bayou in Louisiana. Okay, sure. It was, I was somewhere in between there. But it was, 
for me, it just hit me. It's all emotion, all mm -hmm. fun, good. But so you wrote this song? Yeah. Okay. Where were you when you wrote it? <laughs> well, I, I just moved to Ridgewood about two years ago. Ridgewood is a neighborhood in, in Queens. In Queens. Okay. And um, I like songs that have place names in them, and uh, have a lot of friends that play music that live in Ridgewood. So I took a blues song, which is a very old song, and has been rewritten many times and rearranged many times. Um, and I just wrote some new words for it, and then we all started playing it. OK. That was nice. That's, it was, really has a nice sound. Thank so you. So now let's get to this band mm. is, I have four of you with me here tonight, but the Brotherhood is actually quite large. Yes, the Brotherhood is, is, is much larger, but it's... Uh, it's a big congregation. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it's like a, it's a, we're, we're a club, sort of, like a collective of musicians. And we're all uh, in, sort of centered around the Jalopy Theater in uh, Red Hook, Brooklyn. Okay, so we're all local. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Ridgewood, mm -hmm. Queens. Are you... I'm from South Jersey. South Jersey, still local, still... Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Brooklyn and, and Jersey. Brooklyn and Jersey, yeah, okay. Yeah. But they live in Ridgewood and we live in Red Hook, Brooklyn. But you traveled to the, to the Jalopy. Yes, oh, yeah. that's right. Okay. And one of the verses is about that. It's about different car services that we use between Ridgewood and Jalopy. No New York City subway for you. Yeah, you, I yeah. take the subway there and then I take the car back. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. So what are some of your influences now that we're all pretty much connected to a city? that you, you have this, uh, the flavor of this music is, is incredible. Like it's different, it's not rock, it's not disco, you're not the Guido from Brooklyn. What do you mean it's not disco? Yeah, it's not disco. <laughs> oh, listen, Love Kung oh, Fu is coming up. Let's listen to this and then we're gonna continue. This is my international song. <laughs> Love Kung Fu by the Bro Jugs. My little tiny sexy pussy cat. Meow. Oh, darling, mi cariño, mi muñeca. Oh, there ain't nobody quite like you. Try it again and again, or beast my mama sees the master of the love kung fu. My darling, mi cariño, mi muñeca. Oh, there ain't nobody quite like you. Try it again and again, or beast my mama sees the master of the love kung fu. Quite like you. Try it again and again, no peace, my 
Okay, that was Love Kung Fu. <laughs> Love Kung Fu. So we left off, we were talking about influences. And this song, okay, all I kept thinking about when I heard it was, um, you were, must have been feeling international. I never heard, you know, Kung Fu and Mamacita, Mamacita. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm half Mexican, half Cuban. And I think... Uh, but you're not Asian. When I say kung fu, I'm not Asian, but I, I love kung fu, right? Okay. So, uh, so I, that's the connection. That, that's partly the connection, sure. You can now, what are some of your influences? That's where I was leaving off, because that also has a lot to do with your heritage sure. and where you're from. Sure, sure. Uh, I think uh, I could say this for everyone here playing uh, that our, our influences go go way back to you know old style. Uh, country folk blues music and we we bring that into the present day so like some a song like love kung fu has a lot of to me jug band influences but then i also bring in like some mexican folk influences and you you get international <laughs> yeah yeah i get international you bring it in there you bring in the mix I'm, I'm that's pe american yeah. right yeah yeah it's american that's american and yeah. that's funny that he said like Talking about the whole group, the brotherhood of the jug band. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, bro jugs. Um, when you're when you were writing about Ridgewood Blues also, and you land in this place, so it is this whole big combination. Sure. Yeah, we're bringing our, our today themes into old styles. And you you took that song from something very old. Yeah. And like you re-energized it. And mixed it up. How did you end up at the Jalopy again, though? <laughs> How did I end up at the Jalopy? Yeah. Well, I moved here from Boston uh, about 10 years ago. And no, I moved here from Woodstock 10 years ago, but I, I'm from Boston. And um, I got a gig at Jalopy. And I just, I was with a different band and I just and started hanging was out. Was it a there different sound or it was? Definitely it was another. It was another old time string band, but it was a uh, slightly different. Uh, there was a mandolin, um, there was a violin, upright bass, drums, guitar, of course. And so you were not I influenced was just by Donna Summer. No, <laughs> I love Donna Summer, but I didn't get to hear her until the '90s, really. Really? Because I was listening to a lot of old music mostly um, as a youngster. And what about you? Um, I used to uh, go to a bluegrass jam that was at the Jalopy Theater, and um, it was being canceled because uh, there was low attendance. But um, someone told me about a free show uh, Wednesday nights. It's called Roots and Ruckus. Um, it's like a lot of you know old old same stuff we play and. Um, yeah, so I started coming there on Wednesdays, every Wednesday. And that's how you all met. Yeah. And it's it's still odd to me, the Brooklyn boy, and there you are. How do you ever learn to play a jug? Uh, well, we worked, we used to work together, and 
at the shop there was a band that started, a jug band, and he had asked me to come play jug for them, and I had no idea of how to play jug. But they brought me to Tower Records and got me a Memphis Jug Band CD to listen to and learn how to play. And then it, from there I just progressed and it was, I really loved playing, so that was a big help. So. And wh what type of music were, I used to, what's your I used favorite? To follow, well, I used to follow the Grateful Dead around. And a lot of the Grateful <laughs> Dead songs were actually Jug Band songs. Yeah. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Old Jug Band music. And, and they actually started out as a Jug Band also. Yeah. Uh, they used to be called Mother McCree's Uptown Jug Champions. Before they were the Grateful Dead. Yeah, a lot of rock bands so, lot, yeah, used steel. to be jug bands. Wow. From the Beatles to Led Zeppelin mm -hmm. to like. That's and influenced by the same people. Were yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Now the next song we're going to hear is Straight Girl Blues. And this is a nice song too. <laughs>
That was Straight Girl Blues. And let's see, who who wrote that? Samoa. <laughs> okay. So you have to give me the whole backstory of this of this song. Straight Girl Blues is a love song to my straight girlfriend. And uh, we have lived together on and off for three or four years. And uh, it's just uh, it's just a funny song because we're both straight, but we probably should get married and just consolidate our economy and you know, buy a house. <laughs> and um, she's a great partner. There's actually so. a term. There's a euphemism from Victorian times. They called it a Boston marriage, and it was two women who lived together for decades, um, independent of any man's money. And, they, and it was a euphemism for a lesbian relationship. Me and my girlfriend are not gay, but we want to have Boston marriage. So that's what the song's about. Okay, I thought it was pretty awesome, like listening to it, because I was like, am I hearing it right? Am I getting this? Or maybe You're I'm not it. getting You're it. You're getting it. <laughs> but I loved it. And now I have to say, people don't usually see us like set up, like, you know, we hear the bands play. Of course, it's all great music, and you guys are phenomenal. But this is the first time that I've ever sat down to interview a band and you've all automatically, mm -hmm. even miking you up, had your instruments. Mm. And now when you look at the instruments really close up, I don't know if they could do that, if there's like a real appreciation. These, there's a story behind each and every one of these. These are not brand new. These are like passed down, antique. Yeah. There's gotta be a story. Can we start with the ukulele? This is a baritone ukulele. It's uh, set up like a guitar. It doesn't have the top two bass strings, but, and um, it's really beautiful. It's actually heavier than you might imagine. A lot of ukuleles are super, super light. Um, it's, it it's doesn't a little, have it looks the a little make bigger of it. To me too. Oh yeah, it's definitely bigger. It doesn't have the make of it because back when they were being made, they would get them from the factory and they would just, print the name of the music store. So this the music store's name was Dynamic. Dynamic, you're dynamic, that's, that's great. That's the information that I have about this thing. That's great. And what about this? This is some beautiful artwork on yeah, here too. Yeah, well this is actually Ernesto's guitar. And this is actually uh, Rashad's guitar. You're kidding, you did a switch? Yeah, yeah. yeah just for this we did a switch. Okay, yeah. all right so you're gonna tell me about this guitar, and then when we get to him, you'll tell me about that? Right. That's okay. like an old 1930s uh, Stella-style guitar. Um, it was uh, handed over to me by uh, uh, John Hennigan, who's a musician in the East River String Band. But that's where I got that guitar from. And he collects old instruments. Uh, he's a connoisseur. And uh, yeah, I, it, it plays really well. It, it's a parlor-style guitar, so it has a sound that uh, I like to hear when I hear other old blues musicians play. It has sort of the same, same tone. It's beautiful. It just, look, it just looks like there's so much about it. Yeah. And now, your jug. Yeah. <clears throat> I play mini jugs, but this is my favorite because this one comes from Bedsonhurst, Brooklyn. They found this in the front of their <clears throat> crawl space when they were tearing down the house, actually, in, in Bedsonhurst. Really? And it's probably from the 20s, I would say from the style where it's made and stuff. Because usually they come from down south, it's very hard to find them up north. Most of them I buy on eBay from people down in South Carolina and they dig them up in barns or out in Kentucky or someplace like that. So that's my favorite, this is, uh, okay, this is the Brooklyn jug. That's <laughs> fabulous show. because I mean, who would have ever thought something like that? You also play another instrument uh, yes, that you sat this, down I with. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is called a nose whistle, just to give you an idea of what it sounds like. It sounds like and what it actually is, is it's actually a bird call from Ghana in Africa. Really? So, yeah. that's, what it, that's what it's made from. It's made from uh, ebony wood, and, it's, and you can use that as an instrument. And I throw it in once in a while when we're playing, so just as a change of pace. That's <laughs> awesome. That's really something else. I've never also heard of a nose, <laughs> but no, the nose, nose whistle, nose flutes. Yeah. That's something else. Now this here is 
Rashad's guitar, so. Um, I bought the, yes, yes, I should say. Well, there's a lot of work on that, too. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, really pretty. Uh, brought, uh, bought it at the Jalopy Theater. Um, and um, as far as I know, it's, um, it's from the 40s. And um, a man uh, put it together who used to work on instruments there. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. And from the 40s, a lot of yeah. history there. Very nice. If that could talk. <laughs> if only, yeah. If only. All right, we're going to get on to the next song, which is not anything what the title sounds like, okay? We'll, we'll get back and talk about it. Chickweed. Mm. She's so silly. I said, Oh, my baby, well, you're too skinny. Yeah, my mama, you gotta eat. Oh, my baby, she loves pizza. But my mama, can I eat no cheese? Yeah, my baby, well, she like pasta. Only if it's a gluten free, well, chickweed. You so tiny, you little girl. Sweet lips on me. Mommy, oh, she's so funny. Yeah, my mama, she's so silly. I said, oh, come on, baby, well, I don't just lick it. Yeah, my mama gotta eat the meat. Oh, my baby likes salami and she likes the pepperoni. Yeah, my baby, well, she like pasta. My baby, she from Italy, I said, the chickweed. You so tiny, you a little girl. Sweet lips on me. But let me find out there's something that you ain't. and that was chickweed and I have to say in my mind I thought it was going to be about smoking it but it was about kissing it what is that about explain <laughs> <laughs> uh, that song uh, was inspired by a, a cat by the name of Moon uh, and her nickname was chickweed because she'd always try and uh, you know she was uh, for, for a little while she had um, hyperthyroidism so she got really skinny and you'd have to tell her to eat. 
and uh, she was finicky about stuff, and uh, so that just sort of moved the song along to become what it became. Okay, because yeah. that was really, really cute, though. Sure. It was, you know, but I have to say I was surprised because I really thought it was about chickweed. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> no, no, unfortunately. Is that smokable chickweed? I don't know, I don't know. but they know come the up last with part something new every that day. Word is so, uh, <laughs> yeah. Thought it was going to be something <coughs> to smoke. So I really love the sound, and I want to like just mention again that this is really a fragment of the brotherhood of the jug band, right? Yeah. Yes. Normally, how many people are with you when you play? Uh, depends. I mean, what's the average? Like most of the time. Usually, oh, like five or six. Uh, What's the most you've ever had together? Oof, 12. 12. 12. 12 on stage. Usually we play, I mean, for nine years running, we've been playing at the Brooklyn Folk Festival. That happens every spring um, around April, May. And this next year is the 10th anniversary of the Brooklyn Folk Fest. So that's going to be a big hoopla, big deal. A lot of after parties at, at Jalopy Theater and the Tavern. Now, when you are that many different people you it's all guitars and ukuleles and of course jug are you the only jug i'm the only jug usually. it's the only jug yes yeah. so we have a washboard player sometimes we'll have uh i love uh, that i do i've seen that that's yeah. also another really uh, great thing we'll have different types of banjos like um uh, like a banjo uke or a banjo mandolin fiddles mandolins some fiddles uh mandolins he plays piano every Michelle once in a while piano he plays piano us. most of the time yeah. usually he plays piano but for this configuration tonight, you know, he's playing guitar. Right. And uh, this is the first time the four of us play in this configuration, but we know the songs, we know the music. Well, that's always it, why I was really asking when you mentioned that before, because I really couldn't, to me, I'm seeing you for the first time, so sure. it's the four of you. Yeah. So I definitely have to venture out and catch when you really get a good group, because it's great sounding music, that's and great. it's different and refreshing, and it's a great ride. Yeah. And we also we also play in other bands too, like this. Like I said, the the Jalopy Theater is sort of like a nexus of of musicians, a collective of musicians, and so a lot of people play different bands. She's in a band called Four O'clock Flowers with Ernie Papa Vega. Her nickname is she's she's Samoa Fat Boy Wilson. This is this is downtown Rashad Brown. He also does solo stuff and plays in other groups. Uh, the Greater Jones. He sticks to the jug in the yes, nose whistle. Too. He's he the neighborhood boy. He's a tour of the jug yeah. man styley. <laughs> I'm Ernesto Lovercat Gomez. And yeah, we, we mess around. That is fabulous. Mm. Now, where can um, our audience find information about you? Uh, we're online. And you can look up Brotherhood of the Jug Band Blues. You can look up Four O'Clock Flowers. You can look up Samoa Wilson. You can look up uh, Jalopy Theater, and you know we're on Bandcamp. Uh, you can find us on YouTube, and, uh, and under Bandcamp, Jalopy Records is uh, uh, you know sort of like the umbrella that we all fall under. So. So I've been joking around with their name, but I do want to get it right because they're <laughs> fabulous. It's the Brotherhood of the Jug Band Blues. There I keep looking there at you, you making sure I'm saying it. You got it perfect. You got it. Because I keep saying bro jugs, which I'm sure if you punched it in there, something's going to come up. The but truly, bro jug, yeah. it's the Brotherhood of the Jug Band Blues. And it's a fabulous sound. I hope you enjoyed this show. And uh, come back and see us again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you with so some much. more great music. <clears throat> great you. to meet you. Lady. You know, nice to meet all of you and the best of luck. Right on. And Love that you guys watch, so we'll see you soon.